Someone asked me about how to create a soft diffuse background. Uh, her handler is Trixie1127. I hope this helps you uh, in terms of finding that answer. So I'll be putting this uh, sketch of uh, this lion, uh, stone lion statue in real time. So if you find it too slow, just speed it up. YouTube allows you to uh, speed up to 1.25, 1.5, 1. I think it's like quite a few options there. Uh, as you can see, I'm just going to uh, do the outline, the very broad outline, the, uh, the silhouette, if you like, of the stone statue. I always start with that because I find it. Uh, that it's uh, easiest to get the proportion right and uh, you know reduce errors on my part. So as you finish uh, the outline, the silhouette, you could then you know you move on to uh, fill in the blanks if you like. Uh, you can now do the details. Uh, you always work from big shape to small shape. Can't emphasize that enough. Uh, always work from big to small because you know it's uh, easier to. Uh, you know, get your uh, big shape um, to basically uh, anchor the small shape. If you anchor the small shape first and then you try to get a big shape, you often find that uh, the proportion is off uh, and when you finish, you have some kind of a mangled drawing. Uh, it happened to me so many times that I discovered that actually the best way is to do it the other way around, which is big to small and not small to big. So as you can see, I'm now drawing the smaller details, the mouth, uh, and I'm conscious of uh, trying to get some of the line because by the time you put colors over some of these, you will find that you will no longer be able to uh, recognize your pencil line, but it doesn't matter because um, uh, it is, uh, you know, partly is to uh, train your memory so that you know where the lines are. And so when you paint, even you don't see the line, you kind of remember uh, where the lines and where the boundaries of the shape uh, will be. So I'm just gonna uh, use this as an example for my main purpose of the video which is to create a soft diffuse background. So I'm not gonna put too much effort. Uh, after all, it's gonna be a 15 minute sketch I, and I don't intend to put too much detail or you know just uh, uh, basically get by with uh, as little lines as possible. As you can see progressively the shapes and lines are getting smaller and more detailed and uh, you know uh, basically it's all anchored or uh, around the silhouette that I laid down uh, in the beginning. Uh, without the anchor of the silhouette it is very easy to make mistakes when you are you know focusing on the tiny details. Your eyes are looking at all the little details and you know minute stuff and um, you, will n you will not be able to measure at all time the ratio of each of those shapes. So uh, oftentimes when you you know sketch from small to big that's what happens uh, at the end you will have a very awkward looking uh, object because um, you know in itself you are observing the details but they don't stack up because they are not Lego because Legos are standards but uh, your sketch lines are not so that's uh, that's the reason why it's always always easier to sketch from big to small now uh, I'm just putting down some indicative line so that when I uh, paint with watercolor later I will use those lines as um, indicative uh, lines to put down some watercolor lines as well you will see it now some background uh, as well I make sure that the perspective lines are more or less accurate um, not trying to be too accurate but kinda accurate and that should be good enough so now we're ready to paint um, and I think what we need to do now is to basically uh, make uh, and discuss uh, the way I will do the diffuse. I go in uh, with uh, French Ultramarine. As you can see, it is completely dry. So I am putting down um, probably as dark as I can get away with uh, some dots of colors um, with uh, French Ultramarine. This is my uh, background diffuse approach and the recipe stays the same for a lot of my sketches if you've seen it elsewhere. Uh, what I do is I put down French Ultram Ultramarine permanent al alizarin crimson uh, those are the two uh, you know sort of uh, rhythm and blues if you like I put in dot and I'm just playing with it I'm just trying to create a bit of uh, interest uh, I'm not worrying worried about the hard edges at this point uh, you know I'm, I'm tilting the paper a little bit just to let gravity do a bit of work 
uh, and uh, I'm just playing as in I'm dropping in some variety of uh, you know f uh, French uh, ultramarine and uh, permanent alizarin crimson and uh, I'm painting negatively around the uh, stone statue uh, so the edges around the stone statue they are hard edges right and uh, what I intend to do later on is just to make soft edges on the outside but uh, and I'm also careful in putting in uh, some of the darker spots if you can see uh, the shadowy part uh, in between the the, the paws of uh, the stone lion and uh, I'm putting down uh, dark values uh, you know negatively around the stone statues and um, and I'm kind of ignoring the hard edges that's forming as the shapes are drying it is a problem because if you start having hard edges, then it defeats the whole purpose of having soft diffuse background because you really want to avoid hard edges. Uh, well, we'll kind of talk about how we solve some of that problem when they are drying out very quickly because, you know, in certain parts of the world uh, where it's less humid than Singapore, you find that uh, watercolor dries extremely fast. And before you know it, it's, uh, it's already hard edged on all the shapes that you lay down. Uh, and now I'm going to put lots of water, um, allowing the water to, you know, kind of flow around freely, uh, washing away, if you like, uh, the edges, washing away the hard edges as much as I can. You, as you can see, some of the edges are already hardened and they are already quite hard. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'll talk about how we can solve that problem. Uh, and uh, you see the uh, the water, amount of water I use, it is watercolor. Remember to use lots and lots and lots of water. Don't be a uh, cheapskate with water. It is not, well, some parts of the world, they are expensive. So I got to be very careful <laughs> saying that. Just use the water as much as you can to softly diffuse uh, and wash away the edges on the outside. Leave the hard edge where the stone uh, you know, statue is, but uh, yeah, leave, uh, put in colors. Uh, this is where I kind of rescue the other hard edges. As you can see, there are some parts where the hard edges is forming. I'm just using uh, the w water as well as more colors to cover up uh, the hard edges and uh, the, you know, allowing soft diffused uh, to, uh, to be sort of left alone if you like and dropping in more water and uh, you know covering up uh, the hard edges so that you don't see that anymore and it's gone right so all you see is just hard ed edges around the stone statue and soft edges everywhere else right now i'm going in with cadmium orange uh, my other recipe cadmium orange where i'm just dripping in uh, you know and as much as I can get away with I, uh, I sometimes do it with uh, cat yellow first but I prefer cat orange first because now as I go in with cat yellow I'm hoping that the cat yellow will at least show up somehow at the end of the sketch sometimes they don't because you know it's all wet on wet and when you put wet on wet, on wet you will find that they disappear rather quickly uh, and in any case it doesn't matter because they are all just a hint if you can get a hint that'll be good enough. Uh, now I go in with a very hard bristle brush and I am softening some of the hard edge that I see on the side uh, and I'm trying to get rid of uh, as much hard edges as possible even some though of those that are uh, you know at the uh, you know the part where it goes into the stone uh, statue itself because I want the eye to see s some kind of a diffuse uh, you know um, and boundary between the stone uh, lion as well as the background uh, and i think that's just one of the things you got to remember um you know soft diffuse is always good uh, not too much hard edge everywhere because hard edges really create this feeling that it's kind of like a sticker sticking on a piece of paper and you know it's all uh, too uh, too uh, hard edge and <laughs> too stuck on if you like uh, in that sense so I think I'm ready to paint the positively the stone uh, stone line itself. Uh, I'm going in with a combination of um, uh, new gamboge with a depth of uh, French ultramarine to kind of tone down, and make it a little bit more grey. And I'm focusing on where I think uh, the shadow side of the you know stone lion is, right? Uh, where there's a, a bit on the shadowy side, and I'm just trying to represent. Uh, the three-dimensional form of the stone lion 
by putting in uh, the small uh, shadow or the shadow side of it, uh, if you like. Uh, from a value perspective, one to five, this shadow value probably falls uh, around two, two, two and a half, if you like. And uh, I'm just trying again using a bigger brush just to put in as much of the uh, shadow part as, as I can. Uh, also trying to soften some of the edge as well, leaving where hard edge where I think is hard edge and you know soften up uh, soft edges where I think is soft edges. Usually uh, in this phase of uh, sketching, I kind of switch off my, my, my mind and just observe as much as I can. In other words, I'm looking at a photograph or the real, uh, you know, in the urban sketching instance, you'll be looking at the actual uh, thing and then you are observing the shadow and where there are gradation and soft edges of the shape and so on and so forth. Uh, it's kind of fun and it's very uh, relaxing actually. If you're doing this, it's not much of a thinking required. You're just looking at the shape and the value and the shadow and you're just putting down on paper as much, uh, you know, like to the photograph as you can possibly can. Of course, with more skills, you can accurately represent it. With less skills, you'll be a bit more clumsy and so on, but they're all enjoyable. So don't worry about the result. Enjoy the process is what I always tell uh, my students, you know, and that's probably the best way to sketch because, you know, if you're not enjoying it and you're getting too stressed, it is terrible. So what you want to do is just relax, enjoy, observe, replicate, and, uh, you know, just really just you know, enjoy the moment you are alive and you should be uh, enjoying the fact that you are still uh, making stuff and uh, creating and uh, can't be better than that, right? So um, while it's still wet, I'm going in with a value of four or five and I'm going in to uh, put in a bit more on the darker shadow if you like uh, and I'm trying to make sure that uh, those darker shadows and, you know, is make the shape readable uh, and uh, I'm trying very hard not to put too much and I'm trying to also allow the magic to happen in other words the spread and also the gradation and so on right uh, because you know by having that it feels very much like watercolor and it's not um, acrylic or poster color where it's all hard edges and it's, it's kind of you know hard to uh, uh, you need to do a lot of blending right uh, but in, in this case in watercolor you're just letting water the water you know, do its job it's magic uh, and uh, don't be afraid to make mistakes because it is what it is. Uh, and I'm just dabbing in a little bit here and there, let the brush dance around. But all the time, I'm observing the photograph and I'm just trying to copy where the lines and shape and, you know, and dark parts are and uh, be very careful that I don't overdo uh, the lines or the dots or the blobs and so on, right? But uh, but go in with confidence as well. I mean, if you're tentative, that's also show up in your sketch. Uh, it's not going to be very good because, you know, every time you tentatively and you're kind of drawing with your brush, you kind of, you, you will kill the, the sketch somewhat. So go in with confidence. Uh, and if you're making lots of mistake when you're starting out, don't worry because you get better and the sketch will get fresh, fresher and fresher as your, your practice uh, time goes up and the more mistakes, uh, you will learn from your mistakes and you keep going, right? So, it's fantastic so don't worry about it and um, as you can see I'm using a smaller brush now and I'm just going in with a bit more lines a bit more uh, soft uh, well um, not soft but I'm just using smaller shapes and small lines uh, of course there are mistakes but uh, well anyway that's okay uh, it is a demo of a <laughs> it's a 15 minutes demo so all good right uh, going in with lines going in with more lines uh, all the time thinking how to make the three-dimensional uh, lion pops up in its uh, 3D, 3D form and uh, you know as you know a sketch is done on a two-dimensional two piece of paper but uh, ultimately you need to make it feel like three-dimensional and how do you do it well it's shadow it's line it's uh, a combination of those things it's uh, gradation it is uh, uh, values uh, those are the things that you use to create a sense of you know three-dimensional uh, structure so at this point, I'm putting in quite a fair bit of uh, uh, lines and uh, and I'm just observing where I need to put a bit more value as well uh, and uh, maybe darken some parts just to make sure that it pops and uh, it doesn't 
uh, melt too much into the background although that's what I prefer as well uh, already the structure is in place so I'm not worried when I'm uh, painting over it uh, because you know your eyes can see the back background structure where it's soft and diffuse and then you can see all the sharp one of the contrasts uh, in this sketch is the contrast of uh, sharp versus blur or diffused as you can see all the lines in front are mostly uh, you know wet on dry but the background because it is wet on wet is diffuse and soft it creates this feeling that there is a distance between the two there's a distance between the stone statue itself versus the background which is soft and diffuse and that's actually the whole idea of um, having a contrast of soft edges versus hard edges and making you know the the stone statue pop uh, pop as in it is uh, pushed to the front all right so um, I, at this point, I'm thinking, hmm, maybe I need a bit of lines at the back just to create a sense of, uh, you know, um, uh, the distance, or rather not distance, but the uh, perspective, uh, how the statue sits in front of some building and structure. Uh, and I'm trying to hint at it, uh, although I think I put a little bit too strong. Uh, I would suggest actually to hint and using maybe a, a less of a, uh, you know, uh, strong lines but you know in that sense uh well anyway it doesn't matter i think this still work uh, it still gives me a good sense of uh, uh of uh the the stone statue versus the building in the back and uh, it creates a bit of a distance so i think it kind of work so i'm almost done i think this sketch uh is working i hope uh trixie you uh, you know it helps put my name down for the little sketch that i've done uh, although it's 15 minutes and it's a bit of a rush job <laughs> but i think it kind of work I hope you like it and I hope uh, you stay safe wherever you are uh, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much. Bye.